Scenes from McGill Training Center and this week's ASBP Blood Drive. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. More on giving blood in the COVID climate in just a moment. Also this week, it's back to school for some students. The Maryland National Guard leadership thanks its soldiers and wish a longtime community member a happy 90th. These stories and more, but first, Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Chris Nyland hosted the latest installation town hall this week. And after talking about a tougher mask wearing policy on the horizon, he talked about loosening restrictions outside the fence line and continued restrictions inside. Continuing to have restrictions, continuing to strictly follow these measures, um, it, it's neither convenient nor easy, um, but it's part of service and service rarely is easy. Um, so first and foremost, let me thank all of you for your continued efforts and the continued inconvenience um, of us not having all of our services open to you. Uh, but understand we're doing that not only to protect um, the people right here on the installation, but also to set a good example uh, for others, others in the nation. In other news, COVID times are tough for the Armed Services Blood Program. Usually donations come from all over the federal government, but with so many employees teleworking, the program has been more reliant on military members and military installations. Another challenge, getting people to feel comfortable about giving in a COVID environment. We have measures of social distancing and appointment only. Um, we're taking a few walk-ins, but not like we were before. Because this is like a medical procedure, we still have to take the precautions. We're still under Defense Health Agency. Ms. Trial added that the need for plasma is still there. The need for um, COVID convalescent plasma or CCP is still there, um, therefore we're still collecting, but only at Walter Reed and at our Pentagon locations. The next Fort Meade Blood Drive is scheduled for Tuesday, March 16th from 9 to 2, once again at the McGill Training Center. Go to militarydonor.com and use the sponsor code FTMead. Meanwhile, Anne Arundel County Public Schools are set to open with a staggered opening starting next week. Fort Meade School Liaison Officer Sarah Bonice offers a glimpse of what that's going to look like. So really, only about 35-36% of the students in Anne Arundel County are going back. The rest are staying home. Um, I think they've put a lot of effort into creating the classroom that's one safe for the children that are there. So the kids are separated, um, they have their own personal space, and yet the kids at home can see the teacher. We are asking you to conduct a quick check of your children before you, a daily screening parent checklist. Now that is on the Anne Arundel County website. So we're asking you to take your child's temperature before you send them to school. We are asking them if there are symptoms. We're certainly asking if there's any positive COVID exposure to share that. For more information, go to the Anne Arundel County Schools website at aacps.org. In more local news, please join us in wishing longtime Fort Meade community member Joseph Krippner a happy birthday. He turns 90 years young on March 1st. Krippner, a retired Army Sergeant First Class, worked at the Claims Office for 25 years and taught Sunday school at the Chapel Center for nearly 20 years. For his 90th birthday, family members are reaching out to the community, particularly his Sunday school students, to help wish him a happy birthday. Elsewhere, Maryland Army National Guard leadership recently expressed their thanks to the soldiers who served in Washington, D.C., supporting law enforcement and the presidential inauguration. Hello, I'm Brigadier General Janine Burkhead, Commander of the Maryland Army National Guard. And I'm Command Sergeant Major James Nugent, Command Sergeant Major of the Maryland Army National Guard. I'm Colonel Brian Borkov, Commander of the 58th Troop Command. And I'm Command Sergeant Major Rich Magnum, Command Sergeant Major, 58th Troop Command. We're here on behalf of all the Maryland leadership and task force Capitol grounds. The events at the U.S. Capitol building on January 6th affected every American. While these times can be unpredictable, we always know what to expect from the Maryland Army National Guard. The first units from our state immediately put their lives on hold and arrived in a matter of hours, not days. Finally this week, the latest episode of our podcast, Fort Meade Declassified, is available. You can join hosts Joe Nieves and Sherry Kuyper as they talk with Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Chapeau, leader of this year's Presidential Inauguration Task Force. Colonel Chapeau was most recently assigned to Fort Meade as the commander of the Garrison Headquarters Command Battalion. And that's Meade Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Meade TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Meade Week.